What's going on? Today we're going to talk about overcoming fear. Not just overcoming fear because you're scared of the boogeyman, but overcoming fear and having fear prevent you from achieving success. That's what we're going to cover today. There wasn't a playbook when it came to conquering fear. Usually, when we were kids, anything that we feared, we ran away from. There were some things that we just kind of charged ahead. But if once we feared it, we would run away from it. But when we become adults and we need to exceed in business, we want to go for a higher position at a job, no matter what it may be, we have fear and we're still are running away from it. I'm going to teach you today how to become comfortable with fear. If there's a business that you want to start, how to move through that fear. I'm going to teach you today some tips that I've learned along the way to help me. So let's get started. The first thing I want to start this video off with is me in Somalia. Picture it. 18 year old kid going to a country, never been out of the country before in his life, to fight a war that I didn't even know really didn't give any, I didn't give a lot, I wasn't given a lot of details of what actually was going to take place when I went there. So my heart, my, I'm sweating, I'm just very afraid inside. So we get there and I arrive. And I see people I've never seen before, strange people, strange land, strange smells. And I get all settled in. And then they start giving us the briefing about what's going to happen here while we're here, right? And Somalia, I was during, I was there during a place during, during uh, Black Hawk Down, for those of you who've seen that movie. So my job was to go out and drive big fuel tankers and also drive big 5,000 gallon water tankers when I could have easily been shot, had my truck, my truck hijacked, ambushed, whatever. This was what I was going to be faced with every time I drove out of that gate. Second day there, a little kid rolled a grenade under one of my great friend's truck. And we used to have sandbags at the bottom. And you put your feet on the sandbags to avoid, if a blast was to happen, it would, the, the, the sand would actually absorb that blast. Roll the grenade under. The truck, the front end of the truck blew up. The kid blew the bottom half of their body off. My friend, who I've known for quite some time, couldn't speak for a month. Didn't have a word to say. You would talk to the guy, you would say something, didn't say a word. Second day there. Now, I was already afraid going out of that gate, right? Already afraid. Now, the second day this happens, I have six months to be there, and I have to go out this gate every day. I'm really scared. Really scared. So, it's something strange that happens, though. The more and more you face fear, even with all those circumstances and things that happen, you become comfortable with it. Some strange reason, you become comfortable with it. And I did. I learned to sleep while gunfire was coming into my compound. The first two weeks, I couldn't sleep at all. Every time I sleep, I hear a noise. I just wake up, what's going on? What's going on? I slept with my M16 right next to me. And everybody had to do that. But I learned to put that M16 down by my side and get a great night's sleep. Like to the point where I'm saying like I'm at home now and I say, you know what, it's 10 o'clock, it's time to go to bed. And wake up at six, seven in the morning. Strange, huh? But once you start tackling fear and tell fear that you're not gonna be in charge of me, you make different decisions and you become comfortable with it. If you don't believe me, ask those guys who are Navy SEALs. But here's the thing. I mentioned the word comfortable, but there's a problem with that. If you're comfortable 
always running away from fear, you're not going to grow. Somewhere, somehow, there was a memo that was passed down and people said, you know what? I'm afraid of things that I don't understand. I'm afraid of things that are different, that are in my normal day-to-day -day routine. I'm afraid of those things. <laughs> Why? Has it been told to someone that those things that are different, all of those things are the boogeyman? All of those things are the things you're supposed to be afraid of. That's bad. That is terrible. I'm going to teach you today how to move in fear. So, next slide I want to talk about is this. I'm a business guy. Went to school for international business. It didn't prepare me for the type of business that I'm in now. But I did it. Right? But I did it. So, some of you today have a business that you want to start. You have something that you want to begin, but you just don't know how. You just don't know how. You've never did it before. You're afraid you're going to make a mistake. Don't be afraid. I'll tell you why. Let's start your business now. You got a new business. You have an idea, and you're ready to implement it. First of all, if I were you, I wouldn't tell anyone. And if I would tell someone, it would be my spouse. Or somebody I know that won't put down my idea in the beginning. I would keep it to myself. I would take a blank sheet of paper and I would write down the worst things that can happen if I started this business. And notice when I start businesses, for those of you who follow my YouTube channel, you know that I start a business with the money that's in my pocket. I don't go get loans on a business that I don't understand and expect for that business to work. That's setting yourself up for failure. So I take a piece of paper down and I write the worst the worst things that can happen. Now I don't have to do it. I face fear so much, it's, it's natural to me. But I'm talking about for you. You write that down there, what's the worst thing can happen? And I mean write, be serious. Are you gonna die? Ask yourself that question. Are you going to die? If you're not going to die, said, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start. How can I get started? What are five things that I can do right now and make this business start? Write those things down. If it's sending an email to someone, if it's walking in the office, here, here's another thing too. I rehearse my office conversations. When I have to walk into an office where there's someone that I don't know who it is, right? And I don't know what their answer is going to be and how they're going to react. I will rehearse in my head what I will say to them before I walk in. I would talk to myself and I would say things like this. Okay, I'm going to meet Ralph today. All right, Ralph, this is what's going to happen. Ralph, Abdul here, It'll be real quick. I know you're a busy guy. I don't have time to waste your time. Here's the thing. I have this. I have that. This is what's in it for you. This is what's in it for me. What do you think? I don't give them a lot of fluff fluff. Put yourself in a situation. You have someone that just walks into your office that's trying to tell you a service or tell you about something, you're automatically thinking negative. Neg I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it. To the point sometimes you don't even hear what the person's saying. So if you immediately walk into that situation and tell that guy, hey, or that lady, I'm not here to waste your time. I'll be real quick. I can't even talk, Will, real quick, and I'm going to give you this, and then I'm going to sit back and let that silence happen, because that means you're thinking, and I'm going to look you dead in the eye, and you're going to tell me now if you want the service. And then if I see that maybe you have some doubt, I'm going to put a little more something on it to tackle that doubt that you may be having. By that strategy, eight times out of ten, I get what I want. I'm actually surprised sometimes when I go in certain places and I don't get what I want. But that's just me because I try to talk to people naturally. I don't rehearse 
a skit. I don't say like, okay, my name is Abdul S. Muhammad, and I would like to, no. Just talk to the person like you're talking to your friends. People can pick up if you're nervous, right? And then at the same time, it's okay to be nervous. And if you are nervous, just say, look, man, you know, this is my first time talking to someone about this. I'm a little nervous, man. You know, forgive me for that. You know, but, you know, I don't want to bother nobody. I know how people, businesses are. Just forgive me. Forgive me in advance. And they won't hold it against you. So that there is the first part of overcoming fear. We're going to have probably about five or six parts today. So go take your break. You know, I hope you have your pen and paper out, you know, and I'll see you on the next slide.